Greetings fellow mathematicians. Welcome to a Learning Place, a Teaching Place website where you will find all you need to teach and learn mathematics from kindergarten to year six with deep understanding. This is one of a series of videos on the research behind a learning place, a teaching places, pedagogy and curriculum. Today the research comes from Carol Tomlinson, Pearl Subban, Tracy Hall, the National Numeracy Review, Numeracy Continuums and the Learning Place, a Teaching Place concept sequences and tracking sheets. And it's on differentiation. You will find all of this research under the research tab on a Learning Place, a Teaching Place website. So what is differentiation? Carol Tomlinson talks about the objective of differentiation is to take advantage of what every child already knows and understands and to lead them on from there onto the next level of understanding. It's to maximize each student's growth and individual success by meeting the child where they currently are. Now it seems that over the time the culture of teaching has meant that uniformity has been dominating many classrooms rather than diversity. Now we live in a world now where we have got more diversity than we ever had simply because people are traveling more, we've got the internet, we have, we have got such a diverse world now and we've got to meet the diverse needs of the range of children that we've got in our classes. So differentiating means that we need to make sure that every child is appropriately challenged. Now to do this, the culture in the classroom has to allow children to take chances to be wrong and realize that being wrong is in some ways better than being right. Being wrong initially means that we not only understand what's right, but we understand what's wrong and why that was wrong and why this is right. Now the National Numeracy Review, which came out in 2008, it's an Australian review came up with about, I think, 17 recommendations. One of them was that the necessary resources be provided to allow teachers to work out what level of understanding children have and then to allow the children to be learning from that level. Now, we have things like the numeracy continuum, and on a Learning Place, a Teaching Places website, we have concept sequences. Every concept is broken down into those levels of understanding. And we have tracking sheets that allow you to track every child's current level of understanding along those continuums. Now, how can you actually differentiate in one lesson? This is something that teachers, I'm in classrooms all the time, and this is something that teachers are always asking me. So for example, say these are the levels that you've identified in your class. So you've got some children, when they add single digit numbers, are still using counters. Some children are counting on. Some children are using things like friends of 10, partitioning, and place value. And then you've got some children who can actually add a single digit number to a two digit number. So I've just chosen these four levels at random and I'm thinking I might have say a year one or a year two class. But it's just as easy to differentiate using my sequences, my concept sequences for any grade. As long as you can work out what level the children are working at. So I would not have this on the board before the lesson, I would build this during the explicit teaching part of the lesson. Now if you have an interactive whiteboard like this, it's really easy because you can just do the different levels in different colours. If you don't, you can still do the different levels in different colours, but unfortunately you're going to have to rub it off and redo it the next day. This way I can save this put it up the next day and add some more levels as children move through different levels. I can get rid of this level once no child is working at that level anymore. 
So the lesson will look like, I might for example hold up two cards, an eight and a seven, and say I want you to add these numbers together. Now the children might be sitting on the floor, I will have small containers of about 20 counters available. So any child that needs to use counters, I never let them use fingers. The reason I never let them use fingers is, number one, using fingers is easier than putting numbers in your head. Less mental challenge. They will keep using fingers rather than put numbers in their head. Another reason is, if I'm adding, say, four and three, I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I can't see the four and the three anymore. I can only see the seven. So in that way, I haven't really developed any understanding of four and three joined together make seven. Now, they get their counters. They have to put their counters out. Then I will demonstrate if you used counters, this is how you're going to record. So now I've covered the children who use counters to add eight and seven. They know that they're going to get cards, they're going to select the numbers they're ready to add, they're going to get their counters, they're going to record their counters and their number sentence. Now why do they have to get counters as well as record counters? Because recording counters is easier than recording a number line, less mentally challenging. But if they have to go to all the trouble of opening the counters, getting out eight counters, getting out seven counters, counting all of the counters, drawing their eight counters, drawing their seven counters, that's a lot more effort. So they will move on to higher strategies faster because it's less effort to draw a number line and do seven jumps than it was to do all of that effort in getting out the counters. So that's why I have no fingers and they have to use counters, not just draw them. Now then I might say, so who, I've still got the whole class here, we've covered the children who used counters, they're still engaged because these children are still answering the same question. Who started counting from one of the numbers? This is how you'll record, what did you do? I started from eight, I'll draw eight. How many jumps did you do? I did seven jumps. How do you know what number you landed on last? Because we're going to put our marks and record our numbers. If you start from one of the numbers, this is how you'll record. You are the black level. Now, who started from one of the numbers but didn't count by ones? What did you do? Oh, you started from eight. What did you do then? You added two. Why did you add two? Oh, because eight and two are friends of 10. So we landed on 10. What did you do then? Oh, you found that you had already added the two. Now you have to add the five. So you partitioned your seven into two and five. What did you do then? You added the five. So what does 10 plus five equal? Oh, it equals 15. How do you know? Because 15 is 10 and five. Fabulous. Now we're up to who, now we're going to have 48 and 7. Everyone have a go. If you're using counters, you probably won't do this because you don't have enough counters. That's fine. You just sit there for a moment. Everyone who's ready to do this, work out what this equals. Okay, so who's worked out what it equals? What did you do? And you can see that it's exactly the same understandings and concepts that we used back here. Every child has been engaged in this entire explicit teaching part of the lesson. They all know what level they're now going to go back and investigate at. And it's very easy for me to add in other levels as I need to.